stocks roaring higher right now after a better than expected September jobs report. All three major averages up about 1% right now. Look at that. The Dow's up almost 200 points. The economy adding 240,000 jobs last month. The unemployment rate dropped to 5.9% from 6.1%. That number's a little deceiving, though. We're going to get into more of that in a bit. It sounds great. The labor participation rate, though, that's what we're talking about, dropped to its lowest level in almost 40 years. That's a big problem. Let's go to our panel. Charlie Gasparino is Fox Business's senior correspondent. James Frischling is co-founder and president of New Oak Capital. Jack Howe is Barron Senior Editor. Thanks to all three of you for joining us. We're going to get into this deeper later on, but give me your take. Stocks really like this. Jack, what do you think? The news on jobs is good, and it's it's not, well, too, it's not too good. I mean, okay. you know, there, there's not the wage growth yet, and, and I talk with more and it's more... wage decline, in fact. Right. I speak with more and more <laughs> people who start to cast doubt on the idea that the Fed will begin to raise rates next year. They say, look at the dollar. Okay. It's yeah. so strong lately that it could impair U.S. exports. And that's why the market is rallying. Go ahead. I agree with that. The, the negative on the jobs report was the static uh, wage growth and the low participation, and Yellen has said that wage just matter to her. So I thought a good report might actually spook the market that the Fed might be talking about, you know, moving sooner. Fact right. is, no wage growth. Fed's not moving. Great point. Uh, Anthony Scaramucci made a good point on Twitter this morning that, you know, this means that, you know, we have a slow growth economy and the Fed doesn't have to kick in anytime soon. They don't have to kick in. Therefore, status quo and the market loves it. Joe, remember Joe Fami on this show predicted yes. a couple weeks ago. All right. Uh, interest rates not going up. Despite ISIS and Ebola continuing to dominate the headlines, most Americans still think the economy is the biggest issue facing the country right now. This is according to a new Fox News poll. I mean, terrorism has gone way up to 19 percent. It was 3 percent before. But still, the economy dominating 59 percent of voters are dissatisfied with how things in the country are going right now compared to four years ago. I think that's a really bad statistic, coupled with the terrorism uh, yeah. ramping up. I mean, listen, if you talk to any political guy like uh, a Karl Rove, or, uh, they'll tell you that, you know, these numbers are not good for the Democrats in the, uh, for, the for the midterms. Uh, that, you know, you just it's very hard for the president to come to go on air and say things are good when no, everybody it's, it's believes true. it's and bad. We, and this shows that we say it every day. At the end of the day, it's all about money. That's right. what this survey is showing you as well. People are more concerned about finances and the economy than any else by far. Too many of those jobs have been in low-wage sectors. This yeah. latest report shows good job growth in, in health care, construction, business services, and that's promising, but we need a lot more of a it. A lot more of it, because hourly wages fell and labor force participation rate terrible. Go ahead. When people start to talk about the headwinds that we face, we have trouble in China now, we have no growth in Europe, and then the terrorism, immigration issues here at home. It's a it's a reason to take some of the wind out of the sail of the consumer, and that's going to that, that will affect how far the U.S. can go. Okay, Charlie's big story of the day, outrage on one of Wall Street's big Biggest financial firms. Go ahead. You have the exclusive uh, well, th on this This one. is Cantor Fitzgerald. You remember, they got $135 million from American Airlines on a 9-11 related settlement. Remember, uh, the plane crashed into their offices in the North Tower, 9-11. Now, a lot of people thought inside the firm that $135 million would go to victims' families, would go to the firm's general coffers. But we understand what sources are telling the Fox Business Network is that Howard Lutnick, the CEO of the firm, decided to distribute the bulk of it. The bulk of it. We don't know how much to the partners. Guess what that means? The partners got a huge payday. Guess who's the lead partner? Howard Lutnick. Now, this story is sort of moving its way through the firm. We, we, we were told by Fox, Fox Business was alerted by this last week. Uh, we Did ran, they comment on we, it at all? We ran all this. I went so far as to send my story, which is on foxbusiness.com, to, to, to Lutnick's PR people. They have not commented, and I told them. Did they even it, it respond? Was, yeah, we, I spoke with them. This yeah. is a not, they did not deny, and I told them, deny it. So now here's the bottom line. Inside the company, and I asked them to deny this, the speculation is that Mr. Lutnick, who, by the way, is talking to people about possibly running for New York City mayor, has got between 15 and $25 million out of this thing, since he's the biggest In, the biggest in partner. his defense, this is not illegal, Absolutely. obviously. And we point that out. Um, and, and he never promised it. And he never promised it, and victims' families there have felt better taken care of than they, at they, other they, places. They have, so we want to point that they, out. Given that money, but you know, listen. Here's the thing. Uh, I think this is what I told the people at Cantor why I'm pursuing the story. Um, it would be one thing if you know Howard doesn't need the money. No offense. Right. Um, and the, you know, based on the Cantor's convoluted partnership structure, it's, it's exactly. It's kind of difficult to figure out how much of this he actually owns, which makes it difficult on how much this settlement will actually go to his pockets. I think they're giving people two dollars per partnership share. 
That said, if they were, if they, they what people they were telling me, this is sort of a business-related uh, litigation because uh, business was interrupted when those planes hit, hit their offices, right? Good point. Okay. Then why not put it into the general fund of the business? Why give a big payday okay. to everybody, including your CEO? I, listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong. Clearly, a legitimate You're just story. asking questions, and no doubt no, there will be more questions. It's a legitimate, legitimate story. story. Okay. Another American infected with Ebola, an NBC cameraman working with Dr. Nancy Snyderman, is being flown back to the U.S. along with the rest of the crew. He is set to receive treatment, <clears throat> while the rest of the crew is going to be quarantined for 21 days. Hmm. I mean, now it's we're at the point where every day it's not another news story, it's three news stories. Well, I mean, you know, here's the thing, and, and this is why I think the American public is rightfully uh, worried by this, and 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 and, and it, or almost we're to the point where there is a degree, it's starting to become a degree of panic. They tell you every day, meaning this, the government, the CDC, okay. there's no way of catching this. You know, if someone sneezes on, you can't okay. get it. Yet we see visages of images of people, right, that, that are dealing with the infected people in hazmat right. suits. Bubbles, we don't know. Bubbles let me, let, around them. It's okay. Me, you can't get it from sitting next to the plane on that. And by the way, not only that, on the plane, not only that yeah. we do know, I've talked right. to doctors about this. It's a lot easier to, it's a lot harder to get than the common cold. We know that. Yeah. It's a hell of a lot easier to get than AIDS or hepatitis C. I mean, this, pretty... vast, this vast middle, we don't know how the doctors got it. Did they have sex with people over there? Is that how they got it? No, I'm not saying it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's pretty, I know where I'm going. No, just, no, that, no. Was, that was rough. No, no. It's not. I am not. Yeah. I'm making a legitimate point yeah. here. The transmission of this seems much more casual than the transmission of other deadly diseases that spread, like AIDS, like Hep C. I don't, I think Jackson, there's a it's casual... Spreading, it's, it's spreading in West Africa because people are getting treatment in, in, in places that lack running water but or surgical they, no, gloves. Wait a second, stop. Here you have better facilities no, and you're better equipped, stop. but that said, that said, the first case they report in New York City, I will be no, doing the show from a remote this location where, in the Adirondacks. This is where when, so this, far, when, it seems when people like you say that, this is where it falls apart. How did the journalists get it? How did the doctors get it? Who? No offense, I'm not saying yeah, they had the best. Yeah, how did the cameraman get I mean, it? That's what's this, really. It, it, they had to have get it, gotten it more casual than the uh, the way you get hep C and point. AIDS. That's a good point. All right, at least 76 million J.P. Morgan customers' data was breached after hackers broke into the system by using an employee password. We asked folks on the street how they felt about the hack on the country's largest bank. Here's what they said. I have a mortgage with them, so it does concern me. I actually just opened Wells Fargo's and I will be closing my account with Chase now. If I had money with J.P. Morgan, that would absolutely make me examine other options. It concerns me a little bit because uh, my partner has uh, an account with them. I've been violated through fraud and theft and it is the worst feeling ever. So it does concern me. And there's been a lot of hacks lately going on, so I guess that was something that, you know, Home Depot being hacked and everything else, so it would definitely be a concern. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, everything's been hacked everywhere. I understand that well, this was a really big case, I, I, but... I, I, I point, let's point out, this story was so bizarre yesterday because it began with the New York Times story saying there was a second hack attack, which right. they denied. And they the did York, instantly. And the New York Times essentially <laughs> had to take it down off its front page. Then we broke the story initially that we didn't have the number. What we had on the 3 o'clock show yesterday is that J.P. Morgan, that the, the initial attack was merely addresses and names. Ask, that stuff in the that, marketing ask, side, not the, the operation. Ask now, yourself, who steals data without going after money? One right. possibility is someone who is going to try to steal money down the road. Another possibility is a government. Well, wait a second. But, but my, my point is this. My point is yeah. this. You know, there's a lot of data on people. And this is what the, they, what J.P. Morgan made this point. And by the way, J.P. Morgan could go, you know, CEOs can go to jail for lying about a public company and public statements. That, you know, the information that they got, you can get anywhere. You can get someone's address. Saying name and addresses. I but mean, it was you, things you could Google. Yes. That was their response. Yeah. Cyber yeah. attack cost okay. Target CEO their job, his job. J.P. Morgan stock's trading up today. No, yeah, I don't think people care. Yeah. All right, more bad news for PIMCO. PIMCO. Charles Schwab is dumping PIMCO's total return fund from its target date retirement fund. Charlie, you have another fun fact about PIMCO. Well, you know, it, yes, there's a, there's a lot of consternation out in the market about, you know, whether to keep this. Uh, I could tell you, I know brokers at Morgan Stanley that are just on the edge of telling their clients to blow out of there. And I want to mention to people again that the reason why you care about this story is because millions and millions and right. millions of people, probably you, cops, teachers, firefighters, you are invested with right. PIMCO through your retirement Pim account. So you care. This is your money we're talking PIMCO, about. Make no mistake. And particularly go this ahead. fund is a huge bond fund. So if they have to massive sell, right. interest rates could go up, right, theoretically. And they did for one day, the first day. But when Bill Gross resigned, a lot of people thought it was a bad thing. But from what I heard, there were so many happy people 
at PIMCO on the trading floor of the Newport and Newport Beach with their headquarters that they started doing a Congo. Come on! The tra- no, 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 they started doing a Congo. Music, Congo lines. It lasted, from what I understand, like 15 minutes. I think it's minutes. Congo, right? Congo, Same whatever. Thing. All right. <laughs> Good point. But they were, they were, they had the, they had the, you know, they were dancing around. Did they have okay. music? Because if you have music, you had to have had some four. They had music. Yeah. Now, we should point out that we Bill Gross music. once, Bill Gross had in the past, Encourage people to do Congos as a way of breaking up the tension. Or Congo. It's one of those two. Congo. Well, Congo, right. Congo's right. Congo is a Congo country, right? It is, and I think the dance is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen.